Hey guys, Corey with Palmetto Battery Pros, and today we are going to be installing the Bolt Energy 51.2 volt, 105 amp hour lithium golf cart battery into this 2012 Club Car President. And at the end of the video, we performed a range test, so to give you a good idea of how much range to expect from this battery. And just a side note, this is the original sized Bolt 105 amp hour. The new size that is coming in shortly as a filming of this video is going to be a little bit smaller and it's going to be able to fit in more carts like the Club Car DS or some of the older Club Car precedents with no tray modifications. I'll quickly go through everything that comes in Bolt's professional installation kit. It comes with the dash mounted LCD meter, a high output 22 amp onboard charger, which connects to your battery using the battery connector. Bolt includes the 48 to 12 volt reducer and it is rated for a 30 amp load. This is the 400 amp high output solenoid replacement and the new positive and negative two gauge cables. Also included in the kit is the charge receptacle replacement. Bolt also includes a cover plate and I'll show you how to put that on here in a second. And the final item is Bolt's bag of goodies, which includes eyelets, user manuals, installation guides, zip ties, just little things that you might need as you move through your installation. I forgot to mention that Bolt includes lead acid battery pullers, which is a very nice touch. And this is everything that comes in the installation kit. So let's go ahead and get it in the cart. As always, make sure your cart is off and in tow. Next, go ahead and clean your battery tray because you're not gonna have to worry about corrosion anymore. The first thing we're gonna do is loosen the shell and pull some trim. So using our T30, we will remove these two top torque screws. Using your T40, remove the four torque screws that hold the side trim in place. Pop your two side trim pieces out and pull your mat back. Then you'll see the three T40 torque screws that hold the bottom piece of trim in place. Go ahead and remove those. Using something flat, go ahead and pop the cover for the charge receptacle out. And go ahead and remove the bottom trim. On the back side of the charge receptacle, there are three wires. Go ahead and cut them and cap them. Using a Phillips head screwdriver, remove the three screws and discard the receptacle. On the front side of the charge receptacle, Using your Phillips head screwdriver, remove the three mounting screws and discard the receptacle housing. Next, we are gonna use our T30 to remove this torque screw on this plate to gain access to the controller and the solenoid. I recommend taking a photo of your existing solenoid. The new one's gonna hook up the same exact way. So go ahead and remove the old solenoid. Go ahead and mount your bolt solenoid in place and run your B positive cable from your battery box to the solenoid. Install the small wires to the solenoid. The negative black will go to the negative side of the resistor, which is the black wire side. And the positive small wire will go to the red side of the resistor, which is the positive side. Next, hook your main positive up to the positive side of the solenoid. And on the other side is your B plus cable, which goes from the solenoid to the controller. And here is an overview shot of the solenoid hooked up. Using a 13 millimeter or half inch wrench, remove the B negative cable from your controller and replace it with your new bolt main negative cable. This is the ground that runs to the OBC. 
and we're just gonna completely remove it. This bullet was a ground for your lights, but we're gonna be running that straight to a fuse block. Unplug the wiring harness that attaches the OBC to the cart harness. And on the OBC side, go ahead and cut it kind of close to the OBC, giving yourself enough wire uh, because right here you can see that we jumped the white and the blue together and we went ahead and capped the other ones off. And that way when we plug it back into the cart wiring harness, the OBC is bypassed. You can also go ahead and disregard the grounding wires. Remove the 10 millimeter mounting bolts and you can go ahead and disregard the OBC. Put the panel back in place and secure it with the T30 screw. Go ahead and set your battery in place with the terminals facing the center of the cart. Mark and drill your holes and then nut and bolt the battery down to the bottom of the tray. Also, you may have to adjust the bottom of the tray to be able to get a nut down there and I highly recommend using a washer. The battery is very secure once you tighten it down. Mount your charger and 12 volt reducer anywhere in the battery tray. I always like to leave uh, as much space as possible in the middle for storage. I'm also installing a 12 volt fuse block for power distribution for all of his accessories. Go ahead and plug your wiring harness in for your 12 volt reducer. The yellow and black is your 48 volt supply in and the red wire is your 12 volt supply out. The green runs up to the dash and will go to the cold side of the key switch. And I'll show you that here in a minute. The blue is a constant supply. It's for a radio to keep memory, but we don't have one, so we're not going to be using the blue. Extend the green wire and run it through the battery box and up to the dash. Using your T30, remove the two screws that hold the dash panel in place. And there's also a T15 up top. Once you remove those three screws, you can pop your dash and access the back. Locate a good spot for your LCD screen and using a two inch or two and one sixteenths hole saw, go ahead and make a perfect hole and slide your LCD screen in place. This customer has an existing battery meter in place. So instead of the hole saw, we are going to use our Dremel. Install the LCD bracket and secure it to the dash with the two provided screws. Run your LCD wiring harness back to the battery tray and it will plug in to the display port, which is the, in the middle. Next, go ahead and do your wire management. Using a dual spade connector or a posi tap, take your green wire from your 12 volt reducer and we're going to put it to the cold side of the key switch, which is the blue wire. Hide the excess wire in the dash and go ahead and put your dash back together. Next, we are going to put the bolt cover plate for the charge receptacle in place. And we're just going to use some self-tapping screws to attach it to this bottom piece of trim. Let's go ahead and install the trim piece and tighten it down using the existing screws. Replace your mat and side trim pieces. Next, slide the Bolt Energy AC port into place and using the supplied screws, go ahead and mount it to the cover plate. Plug in the charger input to the AC port. Now we're going to go ahead and hook everything up to the battery and go ahead and grab your charger connection piece. So we're going to start with the positive post and we're going to go smallest to biggest, biggest touching the terminal. First is the yellow wire, which is our 48 volt supply to our 12 volt reducer. Next is the positive from our onboard charger connection, followed by the main positive cable. So go ahead and get those to the post. And using your 13 millimeter, tighten them down. Now we'll go ahead and hook everything up to the negative side. First is a ground from our 12 volt fuse block. Next is the 
negative from our 48 volt supply to our 12 volt reducer, followed by the negative from our onboard charger connection. And the last item is our new B negative cable. So go ahead and get those to the posts and tighten them down. I'll use some of the bolts supplied zip ties to do some wire management. And next I'm gonna hook up my Bluetooth receiver and it goes into the BT port. It has a magnet on the back and you can just put it anywhere on the top of the battery. Plug in your charger connection piece from the battery to the charger output wire. Now we can address our 12 volt accessories. I always recommend using a 12 volt fuse block. Here is our positive and negative 12 volt supply. And you can see right here, I hooked our lights up to one of the channels with a fuse. Installing a fuse block now makes it extremely easy to add 12 volt accessories moving forward. This battery is at 58% out of the box. So we're gonna go ahead and max charge it by plugging in our heavy duty 10 gauge extension cord into our AC port. The charger fan will kick on and it will run a complete charge cycle and shut off when finished. I did perform a range test on my Bolt 51 volt 105 amp hour battery. Fresh out of the box, I installed it into my restored 2008 Club Car DS with a Navitas AC system. I adjusted my settings to reflect a newer stock AC style cart. I added 412 pounds of weight to the cart to simulate a family of four. And I drove on a consistent route. And you can see my results here. After max charging our battery, we ran it down to 75% capacity left and had reached 10.98 miles. At 50%, we had gone 22.24 miles. At 25%, we went 32.59 miles. And we had great acceleration all the way down to 0%. And we went 44.54 miles total before the battery shut off. All right, y'all, that's it for the video on the Bolt Energy 51 volt 105 amp hour lithium golf cart battery. If you have additional questions, um, I posted some links to some resources in the video description. You can also leave a question in the comments and I will answer them as soon as I can. You can also call us Monday through Friday Eastern at Palmetto Battery Pros. We are an authorized dealer for Bolt Energy USA, so if you'd like to purchase one of these batteries, please give us a call, or you can shop online at palmettobatterypros.com. Please hit that like and subscribe button. We have more comparison videos, unboxing, and installation videos coming out on these batteries and other types of lithium batteries and different types of applications, so we hope to see you next time. We appreciate you watching. Thanks, y'all.